dancing and drinking and having a party. Two doors down, they're not aware that I'm around. Here I am, feeling hard, I'm feeling sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm at home just feeling sorry because they're having a party two doors down. They're, they're not aware that I'm around. They're laughing and drinking and eating and having a, an Easter party. Actually, I'm here and I'm coming to you at lunchtime because I'm having a little red pepper dip party myself and I wanted to show that to you. Let me show you. How did I cute? Look at it. Understand that this is a large, which is what I always order when I cook for myself and I always deliver. <laughs> but let me show you what it looks like. This is really, really yummy. It's really super sweet and it has a kind of after kick to it. Let me tell you what's in it. Um, finally chop up three and a half cups of cauliflower so you can sort of know how much is in there. So chop it pretty good because you know otherwise it'll leave like air pockets and you can't tell how much you have. Um, and furthermore, I don't just use the flowerettes on top. I use the stems too, not the green, but I don't, I don't waste all that white stemminess, you know. It gives for good texture and, and still it's the cauliflower, you know. We don't want to waste that. The, the cruciferous family has mega cancer fighting ability. So this is why I love cauliflower. Six of your small red peppers. I got the biggest ones that were in my small pepper bag. Six white cap mushrooms. This will give it um, really no taste, but added texture. One half of a white onion. It was a small onion. Two ribs of celery. One tablespoon paprika and one half to one tablespoon of powdered ginger. I really like a kick, and I don't. I don't even think that's particularly hot. You know, ginger can add a a spiciness, and I like it though. I think it it goes good with the sweet peppers and. The ginger gives it a nice, very different taste. That's different than anything I've showed y'all. It may look the same, but it tastes very different. Um, so make that. It's good. And I'm going to eat the whole bowl and, and probably, well, that's like half of a Vitamix. And then, of course, I'll, I'll shimmy back into the kitchen and get the other half. But I'm going to go outside on a sheet and sit in the middle of the yard. And I'm just going to do nothing but breathe and chew. That's what I'm going to do. So to me, that's a party. It's better than any party I, I could be invited to, you know? So um, here again, it's the holiday where people love to exclude Tanya because I don't fit in with their barbecue rib luncheon. <laughs> but um, what else was I wanting to say? Here's another thing. If you want super white teeth, you don't need to bleach them. Use something you already have in your home. Here's what you do. You take, after you make your smoothies or whatnot with your bananas, you take your banana peel. Cut off about a two inch slice, okay? You're gonna open it up like this and you're going to take this white part and you're gonna rub it. Well, it is Easter, that looked like a rabbit, didn't it? You're gonna rub it on your teeth for about two minutes. And what happens is, all the mineral properties go into your teeth to strengthen them and, and in turn make them white. Look that up online. This is a trick I've been using for a long time and it really works and it's free. You already have the banana peels. Also leave your teeth, um, look, you know, after I do that, I brush that off and my teeth immediately look whiter. So try that. It's free. Free beauty advice. Um, and, and then if, if that don't work, just just paint on your face randomly and people won't notice your teeth. <laughs> um, let's see what else we want to talk about. I want to talk about letting go so you can let go of your disease and your weight and whatever the problem is that's plaguing you, that's causing you not to be the best version of yourself. Um, you know, is it society's expectations? And I keep on talking about that, so I won't dwell on that, but is it other people's judgment? Is it your family working to guide your life? I have this very dynamic force in my life that does this. Your family will try to move you in a way that actually gets them what they want you to have in your life. What is the comfort zone they can put you in to put their self in their own comfort zone. What box do they need to put you in so you fit in the file, file cabinet of their life? 
you know, and and when you try to make your own decisions, do you have people in your life? It doesn't matter if you're 20 or you're 40 or 60. There are going to be those people in your life that do care about you, but they also care to control you. They won't see it as that. They see it as caring for you. But in turn, you're not going to be free. You're not free till you can let go of other people's wanting and needing and judgment on you till you decide for yourself you weigh out your options and you make a decision you live with the grandeur or regret of your decisions and you carve out your own life we carve out our existence um, you know this can help you heal yourself by the image of yourself, by what you are creating. Do you not think that you can be all you need to be because you don't fit in anymore? Or because you don't think you're going to... Let's just say, for example, you, you're tired of your job and you want a different job and maybe you maybe you won't make as much. Maybe it will feel like you, you won't be able to have the comforts. Start really looking and assessing what is it you need and, and are the wants you've been having contributing to stress or are they actually helping you blossom in your life? Are you a woman who thinks they have to get their nails done? My nails are all chipped right now. I'm not too worried about it because I'm fixing to go out and trim the monkey grass, every last one of them with some kitchen scissors because that's what I have. And my nails will be disgusting and I will clean them up and file them later. But, you know, my hands are tools. They're, they're tools to create my existence, and I don't want to have to. Sometimes I polish my nails, but I do the cuticles, and I, I make them clean and nice and the best that they are, but I don't need them to be beyond that, you know. Or, um, or if you like to color your hair, can you do it yourself, or do you have to go to the beauty shop and spend $200? You know, some people spend that kind of money every couple of weeks. It's absurd. It's a lot of money. Um... You know, do you have to have all these new clothes or, or can you just feel good that you can wear the same clothes you've been putting on for 10 years? I can wear the same pants I've been wearing for the last seven years and the ones that I, that I had in a box up in my mom's attic that I had in high school, guess what? They fit me now too. So you can take some pride in that, you know, or knowing like this shirt right here, it has little bottle caps on it, isn't that cute? I've had this shirt for about, I don't know, seven years. It looks like new, I mean, because I take care of my clothes, but there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't look out of style. It does, you know, styles come and go. Just like I noticed the, the high-waisted jeans coming back in, like used to be in, in the 80s, and you'd wear your, your mid-drift shirt, and you'd just have that little bit showing. And then we had, you know, the hip huggers, and now kind of anything goes. So fashion, more than anything, can really be stretched out, I think. Um... But, but, you know, what is it keeping you locked into your disease? Is it other people controlling your mindset on this? I don't know. I mainly wanted to, oh, something else I want to talk to you about. I mainly came to show you my delicious lunch. It's really tasty. I'm going to dip those extra red peppers in the side. And, friends, I'm just never, I, I never go around hungry. I'm, I'm always eating in abundance. And I'm always affording it, you know. And it may be that, that my budget crunch goes to such extremes soon that I may just live on banana ice cream. And I can do that, and I'll be fine with it. But, um, of course, I'd have my greens, too. you got to have your greens, people. But Gail M. was talking about that for years she's been rebounding. Hey, Gail. And she was talking about, um, frankly, her boobs. She was just saying, now, when you rebound, because you start to think, when you're doing that gravity pull, if, if you're chesty, you have to think about that. And even if you're not, I mean, you know, we, we want a high chest. It, it, you know, not abnormal, but you want to, to feel like gravity's not taking over. You know what I'm saying? Here's what I do. I have, I have about two seriously strong support bras. I do not jump on this rebounder without those. Um, first of all, it causes me like, if I was just to have on a tank top, I'm not going to do that. It would cause me like my, like my breathing to be impaired. You know, I don't need that. I want to be able to to not worry about that, to have that weight lifted, and then I can breathe, I have better posture. I mean, you know, just strap them down. Strap the girls down and get to work, you know? You can unstrap them later. But 
I think that's important. She was mentioning that. So I, I'm very mindful of that, Gail. Anyway, I just want to tell y'all that. And I want to tell you how two doors down they were laughing and drinking and having a party. <laughs> I want to hear on the comments what you all did for Easter and, and how you celebrated your low-fat, raw, vegan, low-fat, high-carb, vegan lifestyle and how you were fine with it. I can't wait. I'm going to dry these useless tears and get myself together. 